I'm Jared Dillion. This is the Jared Dillion Show. If you want to call to talk about your money, please call 844-305-7800. That's 844-305-7800. This is the Jared Dillion Show. So, lots of people thought that President Trump is a pro-market president. He is not. He is a pro-business president. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between being pro-market and pro-business. Trump, as a pro-business president, has done a few things that I disagree with. Thing number one, the tariffs, the tariffs. He has imposed tariffs on imported goods. What is a tariff? What is a tariff? A tariff is just a tax that gets passed along to the consumer that ultimately pays higher prices for goods. And what is the purpose of this tax? The purpose of this tax is to support domestic businesses at the expense of foreign businesses. So if you go into Walmart and you're going to buy a doormat, and the doormat is $6 instead of $4, the purpose of that $2, you're paying that tax, the purpose of that $2 is to subsidize domestic producers of floor mats. That is the purpose of the tariff. In other words... In other words, a tariff shields them from competition. And the underlying philosophical assumption of that is that they need to be shielded from competition because they can't compete. They can't compete on a global scale. So what are the consequences when you shield domestic businesses from competition? What happens is, is that they get soft and flabby. They become inefficient. They hire too many people, and they spend too much money, and they're grossly inefficient. That's number one, the tariffs. It's very much against the tariffs. Number two, what are some other ways that President Trump has been pro-business rather than pro-market? Well, how about all the bailouts due to the coronavirus? The bailouts. Same thing we did in 2008. The same thing that got people so upset in 2008 when we bailed out the banks. Nobody went to jail. Like the airlines, for example, right? Think about the business of the airlines. These guys, these guys were running on one month's worth of cash. One month, one month, and they were out of business. And the reason they didn't have any cash is because they spent it all doing stock buybacks, trying to get their share price up. This is terrible behavior. They jeopardized their company, and they should be punished for it. But they weren't punished for it. They were rewarded for it. It's insane. What we should have done, what we should have done is let them go bankrupt. The bankruptcy process is fine. They would have continued to operate. Yes, there would have been layoffs. Those people would have found other jobs. Capitalism is a process of creative destruction. And if you have a bad business, you should let the bad businesses die so the good ones can take their place. And there's nothing to be afraid of with bankruptcy. They get financing during the bankruptcy process. They keep running. It's not as if airlines simply disappear. They have to restructure, bring down their operating costs, and then they exit bankruptcy and everything is fine. You know, if you're a shareholder of the airlines, you are not punished. I mean, yeah, the stocks went down. I mean, if you look at American Airlines, it went from like 40 to 10, but it didn't go bankrupt. It did not go to zero. It should have gone to zero. If you don't let the bad ones die, the good ones can never take their place, and things never get any better. Capitalism is a process of creative destruction, and you can't have capitalism without failure. And we don't have failure anymore. We do not allow anything to fail anymore. If you go back 20 years ago, this would have been unthinkable, the idea that you would bail out a corporation. We didn't do this back then. Now we don't let anything fail whatsoever. It's terrible. 
It's terrible. I am not pro-business. I am not pro-business at all. I am pro-free markets. And if people were pro-free markets in this country, where do you think the stock market would be? The stock market would probably be a lot lower, which would be a good thing, and consumers would benefit. Prices would be lower. If capitalism is allowed to operate, if capitalism is allowed to do its thing, prices always go down. That is the consequence of capitalism is that you have deflation or disinflation. It is when people intervene in capitalism that prices go up. So if you think about inflation, what are the things where prices have gone up in recent years? You see, the price of TVs has gone down. The price of computers have gone down. Price of health care has gone way up. The price of higher education has gone way up. In what sectors of the economy have had the most government intervention, health care, and higher education? And I don't want to, to get into the whole health care dogpile here, but if we got rid of Obamacare and we restructured insurance and we allowed prices to float and we allowed competition, prices would come down a lot. But it's too scary, so we'll never do it. Instead, prices will go in the opposite direction. There is that quote. I think it's probably falsely attributed to Mark Twain. If you want to, what what is it? Uh, if if you want to see, ah, I'm screwing it up. <laughs> I'm just going to give up. If I think about what the world was like 20 years ago, things were very free market. First of all, there were no bailouts. There were no bailouts 20 years ago. We allowed companies to fail. There were no tariffs. In fact, we were signing free trade agreements left and right. We had free trade. Bill Clinton was a Democrat and a free trade president. There were no tariffs. There were no quotas. Interest rates were high. And high interest rates, what do high interest rates do? High interest rates encourage a lot of saving. And they discipline borrowers. And the dollar was strong, which made it difficult to export, which is good. If you make it difficult to export, it makes our companies very competitive. We had this Treasury Secretary named Robert Rubin that went around and always said that we had a strong dollar policy. Now, oddly enough, taxes are about the same as they were 20 years ago, but that's probably going to go up here pretty shortly. There's some other stuff, too. We didn't have as much concentration in the banking sector, so we didn't have institutions that were too big to fail. Things were a lot better back then. I am very nostalgic for the year 2000. Things were a lot better back then. In the last 20 years, we have thoroughly socialized the economy. And I like to say that the year 2000 was the peak of civilization. The peak. It has been all downhill from there. And it's been all downhill in terms of happiness, too. Laissez-faire. Have you ever heard the term laissez-faire? Laissez-faire means leave it alone. That's what we should do with the economy, leave it alone. You know how everybody talks about separating church and state? We should be separating economy and state. There is no reason the government should be involved in the economy. Now, we, when we think about this, it's to the point where we think that some political party is actually better for making the economy go up. But that's not the role of government. The role of government is to create the conditions necessary for the economy to thrive. But it can't make the economy to thrive. The economy thrives because of individual decisions of businesses and individuals. What are those conditions? We talked about them before, but low taxes and light regulations. Also, you need stability in terms of policy. Businesses need to know that taxes and regulations are going to be stable. Otherwise, they can't plan. That was the big complaint of CEOs during the Obama years. They refused to invest in their businesses or hire because they couldn't plan. And that was an urban legend. You know, I used to know a guy, a guy at a bank that was responsible for bringing in CEOs to talk to investors. And that was one thing they consistently said throughout the Obama years was that there was too much volatility in policy and they refused to invest in their businesses or hire because they couldn't plan. If we have a yo-yo of economic policy every four years, it makes it, makes it impossible 
impossible for businesses to function. Being pro-market is a very nuanced position. It's very difficult to explain to people. Now, Reagan and Thatcher did it in the late 70s. And what a lot of people don't realize is how remarkable that period of time was, that trend towards economic liberalization. It never happens in history, and it might not happen again. Regardless of who is president, this country is trending in a bad direction economically, and that trend will continue in the future. I mean, the Democrats almost nominated Bernie Sanders. Now, if I were president, I am never going to be president. I can tell you that I have lived too colorful, too colorful of a life, and I'm a loose cannon. I'm not a politician. I'm an agitator. I'm not trying to collaborate with anyone. My job here, my job here is to write provocative things and say provocative things and get people to rethink their strongly held positions on things. Maybe you will listen to my argument and go vote for a candidate that is pro-market rather than pro-business. Remember, there is a big difference between being pro-market and pro-business. Free minds and free markets, that is what is best for the world. I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show. The Jared Dillian Show.